Welcome to another episode of Just Miss Garage. This time I thought we'd talk about flaring tools like brake lines and fuel lines. And uh, some has got a slick little tool and we'll show you how it works. So I thought we'd run through the pieces for this uh, unit. It's fairly simple, but it looks complex, but it really isn't. So this is the base unit. And then this is the rotating mandrel that slips right on here and clips around for different procedures. And then these are your actual forming dies here. And then your handle is right here. And uh, we'll run through a procedure and show you how it works. So let's run through now mounting it in the vise. Normally we would mount this on my bench vise over there, but it's kind of, kind of funky area. So we thought we'd use this area here. This is a small uh, vise for my drill press. But actually, you just take this serrated part of it, mount the vise, tighten it up, and you're ready to go. It's fairly simple, and there's not a lot of forces involved with making the flares. So this is the DIN side, or the metric side, of the mandrel. And then the side will be, this is for metric. Then for this size, what we'll be working with, which is the 45 degree flare side for, a, in this case, 5 16 tubing. So we'll start off by cutting some tubing to the length that you need. We're just going to show this in an example here with some 3 8 aluminum tubing. So we're going to use a tubing cutter. Um, you don't really want to cut the tubing with a hacksaw because it makes a tough, rough cut. So you just, it's going to be a simple process of just, and what it's going to create is a nice simple cut, but there's going to be a, a burr on the inside. So you take your standard deburring tool. Um, this has got multiple edges on it. These tools do have a little deburring tool right here, but on, on harder tubing, it doesn't really work very well. So I like a multifaceted tool like this that'll make a nice clean area in here because you want to make sure you have a nice radius on the inside. And then we'll show you, I actually use a, a, a convolute wheel on a buffing wheel to, to trim this up and really make it nice and smooth. So now that we've cut the tubing and polished it and radiused it on the inside, now we're ready to do our flare. So we have two pieces. Um, you want to make sure they match because on some of the smaller tubing with the DIN ends, you don't want to mix them because it only goes one way. So we'll lay the bottom mandrel in place and then take your tubing end, set it in place on the mandrel and then lay the other half of it on place, sort of halfway eyeball lining it up. Um, you want to have the tubing roughly flush with the end of the mandrel. Then we'll slip this part over, put your handle in like that to lock it in place, and then just lightly run this down. Now that we have the tubing in the mandrel and the whole fixture locked in place, the, the next step we're gonna do is to line everything. So we have the tubing sticking out a little bit. We're gonna push this into the point where it locks in place, then clamp this down tightly. If this is not tight, the tubing may move. So you might want to watch that. So now we'll go to the green step for the part, first part. And then orange, make sure and always push this all the way in until it locks in place. And there's the flare. Okay, if you're doing a typical installation, we'll screw this rascal together. And it's always best to use a tubing wrench because that way you don't flare the edges of it to tighten it. Tighten it up and you're ready to go. Nice leak-free seal. We thought we'd show you another example. This is 3 16 brake line tubing. So it's the smallest tubing that this uh, unit does. So again, we've got this cinch down. We'll go ahead and position it properly and then clamp it in place so it holds the tubing properly. And then we'll go to 3 16 Go ahead and press it in. That's the first part of the flare. And then the second step is the orange for 3 16 This will do the double flare. OK, 
Okay, we'll loosen this up. Pull this out of the way. Mandrel comes off. And there's the tubing. So one of the things we haven't talked about yet is materials. Uh, this slick little tool will do mild steel, brake lines, fuel lines, that kind of stuff. It will also do aluminum tubing, which is really soft and, and easy to bend. You can also do stainless steel. I like to use the annealed tubing because it's been softened and it'll make a much slicker uh, flare. So the key is, again, make sure your prep is properly done on the end after it's been cut, and uh, this tool will do the job for you. So now that we've used this tool a couple of times to make some flares, we've learned a couple of things. Um, it's really important that you deburr the end of the tubing properly. I like to actually even polish it on the, on, the, on the machine to make it as smooth as possible. You might even want to add a touch of oil on the end of this to, to let make your tool last longer. And what you'll end up with some really nice flares. So one last point, you probably all done flaring in the past with a clumsy tool and everything and it's really a hassle. Uh, this looks complex, but actually it's much faster to make the flares with this tool than it is with that other stuff. So uh, if you like what you see here at Just Miss Garage, we're going to keep cranking these things out, but uh, you can find this tool at summitracing.com and, um, and we'll see you next time.